Okay, so the first thing we're going to do, open up Xcode, and we're going to create a brand new Xcode project. Uh, so make sure that iOS is selected. We're going to do a single view app. Click next. And then for your product name, I'm just going to call it calculator. Uh, your team can be whatever team you have if you have an Apple developer account. Uh, and then organization and organization ID only really matter if you're going to upload these to the App Store. Uh, for these, we're not going to, but uh, that's just something that we'll, we'll, we'll learn about that a little bit later. Language is Swift. And then for the uh, UI, we're still just doing storyboards. So click Next. And then it says, where are you going to save it? Uh, I mentioned before, you can save it wherever you want. I don't like saving things on my desktop. Uh, as much as possible, I like to keep my desktop clear. So typically what I'll do is I'll create, so uh, this is Mac, this is a Mac, but inside my home directory, I'll create a folder called source or SRC. And then inside SRC, I'll place different projects. So like maybe I'm working on some games or there's another company we were playing around with um, making a wedding app called Ember. Uh, again, whatever projects or things that you're doing uh, for, it, it's a really good idea to keep things separately. So if you are doing, if you're trying to learn something else on something like Laracast, for example, uh, keep that in a separate folder. If you're learning something from a user on YouTube, then keep that separate as well. So uh, in my case, this is a project for Kojo. So I'm gonna save it in there. So I'm gonna create that. Um, from here, we can create a Git repository on my Mac. Uh, it's just gonna run that git init command for you, but we're just gonna do it by hand just so that we, uh, just so we're really comfortable with that. So I didn't, I didn't check that. Uh, so now that that's created, uh, I'm gonna open up my terminal. I already have one open on a separate desktop. I'm gonna open up my terminal um, and then if we do LS, so I'm already in, let's say I'm on my Mac. So, or, or even if you're on Windows, you could be doing this, um, I guess, depending on what tools you're using. But uh, if you have a bash terminal, or if you have like a Linux style terminal, you wanna to go to your home directory. And so, like I said, I saved mine in source, Kojo, and then I called mine calculator. Okay, so we wanna open that up. Right now, it's not a Git repository. And I can tell that based, based on the command line tool that I'm using, uh, I can tell that I'm not inside any, any repository. We could also tell by doing uh, ls-la, which kind of shows all of our files. Uh, and you, we can see the calculator folder and the Xcode project folder, but we don't see any .git file, that hidden file called .git. We don't see that. So we know that this is not a Git repo. So in order to make that a Git repo, just do git init, okay? And again, because of the command line tools that I'm using, I can tell right away, hey, we're inside a repository. I'm on the master branch, even though there's nothing inside it yet. And it kind of told me that I that it created this .git uh, hidden file or hidden folder. So now if we do that same command, ls-la, we'll see that .git folder in there. And that's, that's everything related to our source control is in that folder. So if we ever wanna, for whatever reason, stop saving stuff in the source, uh, under source control, we can just delete that .git folder and, and we're good. Okay, so I don't wanna do that though. Uh, so the thing that I'm gonna do is, uh, well, I'm gonna commit, uh, I'm gonna commit as that first commit. But the other thing that I always like to do is create a git ignore file. So remember I, I told you git ignore is, uh, git, uh, git is smart enough or like it uses the git ignore file to ignore things that you don't want to put up in your uh, remote repository. So there's certain files that maybe you don't wanna put on uh, like in GitHub. So if you're not, if you're not sure which files you want, I mean, you don't have to have a git ignore. So maybe you just want to put everything up there. But sometimes you might have some files that have some passwords or something like that. And you want those passwords local on your, uh, like while you're developing. But of course, you wouldn't want to put those up in 
uh, in GitHub so that everyone can see them. Of course, we wouldn't want to do that. Uh, but there's additional files as well, just build files or or whatever they get they get added as you're as you're working in Xcode or just on on Mac. So I always start out with the gitignore file. So go to gitignore.io, gitignore.io, and then I'm gonna do Mac OS. We're working in Swift because I'm working on a uh, I'm working on like an iOS project. I always just put Objective C, even though we're not going to really be doing it. I just always throw that in there. We are working with Xcode, so I always throw that in there as well. If you're if you're ever using other IDEs or text editors, like maybe Visual Studio Code, you can throw that in there or Atom. So one there isn't one for Atom. It's just small enough. Um, yeah. So Again, I've, I've said this before, but this this is created so that uh, um, this is created so that you don't have to know all the files that are not important. Somebody else created that for you. So if yeah, so we'll just we'll just create this. We get all of these files that it's going to ignore for us. I'm just going to copy all of this. So I just did a control controller command A and then control or command C, okay? And then, oh, go back to my terminal there. In this folder, I'm gonna say touch dot git ignore. All right, and then open, open dot is just gonna open up this particular folder. Okay, so I've created that git ignore file. You can open it up with whatever text editor you have. Uh, I don't know why it doesn't always open up with Visual Studio Code. That's the that's the one that I would prefer. Let's see if I can just find it there. There's Visual Studio Code. I'm just going to say always open with that. Okay. Okay. Then I'm just going to paste that that get ignore from the website. I'm going to paste it in there. Make sure that you save it. Oh, go back to my terminal. Get status. And you can see I have a bunch of untracked files. So this is going to be our first commit. I'm just going to do get add dot. We're just going to add everything that isn't staged and isn't tracked. Okay. So now if we do git status, you can see it's staged a whole bunch of files. Remember I mentioned that git has that staging area, that intermediate before we actually commit. Uh, oh, Then I'm gonna do git commit. And then just say, uh, yeah, just whatever, first commit or my, you know, starting calculator project, okay. Right now, we can't push it anywhere. If we do git push, right, it says, oh, we don't have anything to push. And we can actually double check that by saying git remote dash b. We don't have anything. Git remote. Right? We, don't have, we don't have any remotes. So again, I always do this when I'm setting this up. I'm going to go and save this on, on my GitHub profile. Actually, I'm going to save it on our uh, Kojo GitHub. So on, in your in your repositories area, click new. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna call it calculator. I'll call it calculator course. And then you can probably put like a short description, like maybe eventually we're gonna put you know what version of Swift and what version of iOS that we're on. Uh, so, but okay, I'm going to make this public so that you can see this. We are not going to initialize this because we already have, we already have an, a repo on our local machine. So I'm going to create this repository. Okay. And we have that existing repository on our local. So 
you can it, you can use the address right here. Again, either use HTTPS, which is like kind of password based. You can think about it like that. Uh, you can use this. It will, if you haven't entered it already, it's going to prompt you for your password. Or you can use SSH. If you don't know what SSH is, don't worry about it. Just use HTTPS. Okay. Like I said, so so the thing that you'll notice is it. The thing that it changes when I click is it just changes what command is right here. Right. So again, if you don't know what SSH is, we might cover it in a different course. Uh, for right now, it's not important. Just use HTTPS, and then it will prompt you for your password. That's all. Okay. So I'm going to use SSH. But if you don't know what that is, you should choose HTTPS. Okay, so I'm gonna add that remote. Okay, then if I try doing, so you'll actually see, okay, the next line, get push. So now I'm gonna do get push to origin master. So Let's actually, well, it's already there in the background. We're going to take a look at this. Once I hit enter, it pushes up. Okay, it kind of tells us everything that we need to know. Created a new branch master on the uh, on the remote. If if I go back to this website or if I go back to GitHub and we see the calculator course, that's what I'm looking at. If I refresh this, we now see that okay, who who committed, we see all those files that I have. Now it's it's saved up online. Okay. Uh, yeah, so now we have it saved. So the next thing we're gonna start doing is start building out our layout. I'll see you in the next episode.